guys, I'm Rhoda and welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is going to be the weekly intuitive astrology reading for September 5th. Yes, yeah, September 5th. I have my notes in front of me. Uh, to September 11th. It's going to be a very, very big week. Uh, Uranus is doing a lot this week, especially under the full moon in Pisces. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Hello. Happy to have you. Don't forget to drop a like or subscribe if you want to see more content moving forward. And make sure you always check your notification settings. <clears throat> YouTube changes them sometimes, okay? So let's dive into the astrology and then we're gonna go ahead and pull some cards. Um, the first thing I wanna mention is just the big transits that are happening this week. So by the time we hit Monday, September 5th, Mars is gonna be in the pre-shadow retrograde phase and Venus, almost said Virgo, Venus will officially have moved into Virgo. On the 6th, the day after that, we have Pallas Athena moving into Cancer. On September 9th, Mercury officially goes retrograde into Libra at 8 degrees. And then on September 10th, we have the full moon in Pisces at 17 degrees happening at about 6 a.m. East Coast time or so. I will be doing a live on the full moon over on Patreon. I always post them after the fact to Vimeo for those who want to see them, but you don't really want to be a patron. Um, I'm probably going to be making some changes to Patreon too. Um, and I'll just say the near future. It's stuff I've been percolating on okay <clears throat> for those who are interested um so getting into the week like i said uranus is doing a lot and it's also doing a lot with the full moon so the energy we have towards the end of the week because of the full moon we're going to be experiencing for longer than this week and it's really circulated around change okay uh we have the sun trine uranus all week it peaks on the 11th though so it peaks the day after the the full moon but it is very strong on the day of the full moon in the beginning of the week it's kind of on the weaker side so don't be too worried about it but it's a positive energy um this energy where'd my notes go there it is the trine between the sun in Virgo and Uranus in Taurus Uranus is still retrograding by the way in Taurus hold on you know what this is a little high for me can I just bloop Hold on. Did it blue? No. Yeah, it's a little bit better. You can see Clydester in the back there taking a nap. Anyway, <laughs> when we have the sun trine Uranus, it tends to bring positive changes and excitement. A lot of excitement and a lot of confidence and courage to try new things, new experiences, uh, talk to people you never otherwise would have spoken to, do something that's out of your normal routine. And it's great, especially while we have this like confident Mars energy still as it's working with Mercury, and I'm going to get into that in a second. Uh, but just know that this week is where we're going to be feeling like change is not only necessary, but we're also going to see changes in our environment. We're going to have change even potentially thrust upon us, and the full moon is going to highlight how we handle that. I'll get to that in a second, okay? Some other things I want to mention about the sun trine Uranus. We have a few other aspects that are supporting that. Uh, the North Node actually is supporting this aspect. The North Node is also trying the Sun. North Node is in Taurus, for those who are not aware. It's about at 15 degrees, moving into 14 degrees this week. Um, the North Node is also conjunct Uranus in Taurus. And then Chiron is actually working with the North Node and the Sun. So we have Uranus, we have the Sun, we have the North Node, and we have Chiron. All of them are working together. It's very crazy. It's very, very cool. Uh, as we start to embrace some of these changes or have these changes thrust upon us, we're going to have a little bit of an easier time being open-minded to them and running with them and seeing what adventure comes forward. For some of us who are going to be initiating change, because both are going to be taking place, change thrust upon us and change that we are initiating, it's going to feel a little bit like it's it's destined, like it's kind of falling into place the way that it needs to, like it's happening for a reason. That's how these changes are going to feel. Even the changes you initiate, it's how it's going to feel to you. Uh, the other cool thing is the way that Chiron is playing a role in this, it's going to feel like we're being liberated. It's going to feel like we're being uplifted from things we've been carrying around or things we're insecure about and being more self-accepting of those things, but that we're able to embrace new versions of ourselves, new circumstances, new paths a lot easier, okay? So it's an awesome thing going down this week. Now Mercury. Let's talk about Mercury. On the 9th, Mercury is officially entering, 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 what's entering? <laughs> entering its retrograde phase. When Mercury goes retrograde, as we all know, uh, communication starts to be hard, plans seem to be a little harder. The fact that it's in Libra tells me that it's going to really affect relationships. It's also really going to affect our ability to problem solve, uh, so keep that in mind, okay? Uh, Mercury is going to be trying Mars and opposing Jupiter still. We had that this past week, and it's still here all week. It's it's a little on the weaker side, but because Mars is approaching its retrograde and it's already in the pre-shadow and Mercury is entering its retrograde phase and Jupiter is retrograding, 
<laughs> retrograde, retrograde, retrograde. It's like a drinking game. Uh, they're all moving kind of slow. So that's why they're still kind of hanging out together, even though they were already hanging out last week. And so all of that is still here. Um, bringing confidence, bringing charisma, influx of ideas, big ideas, and you're going to want to run with it. Just be mindful about that opposition to Ju Jupiter, I said Saturn. That Mercury opposing Jupiter, especially now that Mercury's entering its retrograde energy, its retrograde period of time, there can be some fumbles here. We could feel really overly confident, really overly optimistic about some of the things that we're thinking of doing or that we want to do or that we want to say. We might have impulsive speech. Be so careful about your impulsive speech. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I keep spitting. You know what, let me change the lighting. It's a little too harsh for my liking. Um, the sun's also going down, so it's going to continue to change. I feel like it's giving me like super dark circles here. Uh, oh, that's a lot better. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Let's keep that. Anyway, just be so careful. <laughs> be careful with uh, speaking before you think, acting before you think, uh, getting so caught up in all these crazy cool ideas and the, that feeling of Uranus of, oh, I want to I wanna shake things up. <laughs> Let's do something exciting. Let's do something that gets the blood pumping. Be careful. Just be careful. Check, check yourself. Check things. Cross your T's, dot your I's. Just make sure everything is like, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, just make sure everything is is looking good before you dive into something or just impulsively act on things. It could really backfire, especially while we are in this like Mars pre-shadow phase where we're getting set, set up for the lessons of retrograde Mars retrograde for the next six months. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good opportunity to set yourself up for some big lessons that maybe you don't want to be setting yourself up for. I'm not saying don't take risks. Take risks. They could really pay off this week. Just be careful of details. Just stop and think about it for a second before you take the risk and then take the risk and then see what happens, okay? That's all I'm saying. Uh, the full moon. Oh, this full moon. So like I said, I'll be talking about this live on Patreon in, like, in way more detail. Uh, but the biggest thing I wanna mention about this full moon is that it is sextile Uranus. Enter Uranus again. Uranus is at 18 degrees, the full moon's at 17 and it is in a sextile. This is going to be interesting because it also aligns to a fixed star, and I can never pronounce the name of this one. It's it's actually um, in Arabic, so it's really hard to pronounce. So forgive me for anybody who speaks Arabic, and I botch it. I apologize in advance. Uh, Fumo, Fumo Samaka. I did my best. That fixed star sits at Pisces, 18 degrees, so it's also very... Am I lagging? No. Thought it was for a second so it's very tightly conjunct uh this this moon as well so we have uranus we have this fixed star at play and we have a sextile between uranus and and this full moon this fixed star is all about attunement it's all about can you maintain your compass can you maintain your sense of self and sense of direction while chaos strikes what did i say about uranus lots and lots of change and with mercury retrograding and the opposition with jupiter and that uh, try with Mars, between Mercury and Mars, it's, it's a really good setup to feel really ballsy about certain changes and you can lose yourself. So just maintain your center, cross your T's, dot your I's. That sextile between the full moon and Uranus, um, that also is going to bring about this feeling of you can make anything a reality, that you can bring your dreams into this reality and that you're gonna wanna take the risk to do it. Really rely on your intuition, really fall back on your faith, really fall back on your on, on your sense of trust in in your own discernment, okay? And also that things will work out the way that they need to. Because for some of us, we're just gonna have change happen to us and we're gonna have to adapt and maintain our compass, maintain our direction and handle shit. <laughs> Again, this is a really good setup for Mars retrograde. Like if we if we have trouble like maintaining our compass and sense of selves, uh, we could get ourselves into some circumstances or situations or relationships that will set us up to learn some big lessons under Mars retrograde. This isn't meant to scare you. This is meant to empower you. Okay. If you can maintain yourself, this is gonna be an amazing week. You're gonna have some big risks that will pay off if you can maintain your compass this week. Okay. Big big change that could really liberate you this week okay 
Um, now, as far as signs are concerned, it's a little all over the place, actually. It's a little all over the place. Uh, for Taurus, 15 to 20 degrees, that's where I would look in your personal houses. That's based off your rising sign, for those of you who are new. Uh, I would look for that to see where change is going to strike, where towers are going to go, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> or you're suddenly going to want to change things up in your life. Uh, 15 to 20 degrees Taurus. For sure, for sure. Um, I just got heard the struggle. Libra and Gemini. I feel stumbly, like like stumbly kind of energy, scattered energy with that. Uh, I want to say five to ten degrees. Libra and Gemini. It's weird because I feel like like it's like a roller coaster, almost like a lot of mood swings, like very up and down, like like you know, moments of feeling really confident and like really high on life and like gung-ho and then like a crash. And then up and then down and then up and then down and up and down. That's kind of what I'm feeling actually. Um, so Libra, Gemini, five to 10 degrees, look for those where um, where that falls in your personal houses to where you might have this up and down, up and down, up and down roller coaster. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. One more thing I wanted to mention. The following week, uh, what would that be? September 12th to the 18th, we're going to have Venus square Mars. So not fun when that happens. And they're both going to be in mercurial signs. Venus is going to be in Virgo. Mars is going to be in Gemini. Yuck. Uh, when I wrote that down, I actually got a, I got a, a hit. I got an intuitive hit. Conflict of how things should be right way, wrong way. It's going to bring up a very black. Oh. Um, so the following week when M Mars is square Venus words, they're gonna, it's gonna bring about a very black and white kind of way of thinking, which also kind of go, goes hand in hand with um, Mercury retrograding because it's hard for us to really have that sense of clarity and it's easier to see things as right or wrong or black or white or extremes, especially when Mercury's in a sign like Libra, which is all about balance in the, in the middle, right? What's the shadowy version of that? What's the opposite of that? What's the challenge of that? Extremes and extreme opposites. So. For the week of September 12th to the 18th, be mindful that when you're dealing with people or even like when you're trying to think of things and deal with yourself, you might have a very black and white way of thinking and you might feel like you're really struggling with that. But if you, again, maintain yourself, your attunement, your compass, you'll be fine. Okay? All right. Anything else? Hmm. No. I don't think so. I mean, obviously the full moon Pisces is like gonna seriously affect Pisces. Um, but that's gonna go hand in hand with the changes. That's gonna get, go hand in hand with the changes. So arguably you could look at Pisces 15 to 20 degrees along with Taurus 15 to 20 degrees for where these like changes might happen. But I really feel like it's gonna happen in Taurus. Pisces is just an assist. Oh, thank you. <laughs> They're like, wait, you're not done. <laughs> My guides are so funny. They, they they do that. They go like, wait, 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 wait. They like little nudge me. Um, activations. So for those of you who are on a spiritual path or you're like, pro you're doing a whole ascension path or you're just in the process of all of that stuff and you're like awakening or you have been awake and you're just like still in the midst of everything, activations and downloads and upgrades to come from Full Moon Pisces. Uh, stay aware of your dreams. Take time to meditate. Take time to listen. Take time to really listen to the inner compass, but also to your guides and anything that's coming towards you. Um, intuition is going to be peaking, and you're going to want to really rely on that. You're going to want to really utilize that to maintain your compass through changes and then this overly confident energy. It's almost like the ego is going to get like an ego boost out of nowhere, and you're just going to feel like over the moon about a lot of things about yourself in a way that might even be unrealistic. So intuition, intuition, intuition. Um, stay in tune with that. Okay. We're good. <laughs> it's all the astrology. Uh, let's go ahead and pull some cards. Hold on, let me get a little slip first. Okay. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? I feel like that, that Venus Virgo energy, actually, um, that strong sense of discernment that comes with Virgo, I'm really feeling that right now. Why am I feeling that so strongly? Obviously, it's going to play a big role here. Otherwise, they wouldn't be bringing it up. 
Uh, let's go with animals. Let's go with animals. Uh, this is the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. All the decks that I use are linked below, by the way, if you're curious about um, any of them or you want them for yourself. Yourselves. Grammar. Anyway, moving on. Now I'm feeling Gemini. What? <laughs> Mercury. Hi. Hello. Do you just... Do you need attention right now? <laughs> like, literally straight up, like, Virgo Gemini. Virgo Gemini is, like, like all I'm feeling right now. Just heavy, heavy Mercury energy. Heavy Magician energy. Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? I wouldn't be surprised if Crow comes out. All of a sudden, it just feels super strong. Mercury. 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 Alchemy. Magician. See. Ooh, not too far away with Firefly. Firefly is also very mercurial, uh, but we have the Phoenix. Love the Phoenix. The Phoenix relates to the root chakra. It does speak of um, rebirth. It does speak of rising from the ashes because it is Phoenix, but it also speaks of you, you've, you've solidified such a strong foundation of yourself and such a confidence that you can rise and elevate within the self. Firefly is inspired energy. It's quick. It's fast. It's penetrating. I'm getting the word penetrating. That to me feels mer like Mercury all day long. All day long. Like I said, this week, there's going to be a lot of confidence here. Just be careful with it. <laughs> Just be careful with it. Um, it's going to feel like suddenly you have all the answers you've been seeking, or suddenly it's like you you have a solution to a problem you didn't know you had, and you just want to run with it. Like, there's something about this energy that feels really fast, like kind of eight of wands. Like, ideas come in, downloads come in, thoughts come in, and it's like, I got to act now. Oh my god, I have it figured out. I, I feel so good and so confident about this. I got to act now. Like, that's how it feels. Just be careful. Just be careful. It's a big spark being lit there. I feel like it's almost like lighting a match. Oh, that's how it feels. It's like lighting a match. And once the match is lit, it's like it's really hard to stop. It's really hard to stop and think straight. It's really hard to stop and just like process. It's impulsive. Be careful. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? <laughs> peacock energy. Peacock is interesting. Peacock to me is such an image energy. It's such an aesthetic energy. It's very captivating. There's something about this that feels quiet though. What is this? This is weird what I'm feeling off this peacock. I feel like a silent energy. But I feel like someone's captivated, like they're like they're mesmerized, stunned even, is actually what I'm feeling off of this. This might not even be you guys. This might be someone else. Um, <laughs> this might be your state as you're getting all this. You're you're lighting the match, or the match is being lit. It's like ah. Anyway, I'm getting. That's a joke. Um, no, this is in the environment. So keep in mind the way the energy works. Uh, you can resonate with this energy, you can resonate with that energy. It's fluid, it's not linear, and so we're all kind of in each other's energy fields all the time. So just keep in mind, you could be playing this role at some point this week, you could be playing this role at some point this week, but I feel like someone's match is being lit, and they have to go, they can't stop. And I feel like th this is almost representing the environment. Like, there's a stunned energy and they're captivated and they're mesmerized by this, by what's happening to you. That's how it feels to me. Let's keep going. You might draw a lot of attention this week. Good luck. <laughs> I feel like some of you did not like the fact that I said that. Good luck. That, I, that you're attracting energy. They didn't like that I said that. Anyway, I realize it wouldn't make it. Anyway, well, can't stop talking. Ooh, horse. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Horse is, in this deck specifically, is the master of earth. The master of the earthly plane, material plane of work and money and the juggle of life and doing it with grace and doing it with integrity and doing it with ease. That's, that's horse energy. Oh, don't know what that was. Uh, that's horse energy. I feel like horse energy is going to help you guys out a lot. And horse energy is really grounded. It's really grounded. So in this, 
match gets lit. Ground. Ground. <laughs> Ground. I also want to say really lean into Virgo. Uh, it's funny because this is Earth energy, and normally I don't look at this as Virgo energy, but I feel like that Venus Virgo is really going to help a lot. Lean into your inner Virgo. We all have one kitty cat. Uh, we all got an inner Virgo somewhere, regardless of what goes is of what's going on in our chart. Channel that. Tune into that. The sun's also in Virgo. It's Virgo season. Um, being organized, being efficient. Efficient, I heard efficient, efficient, efficient is going to really help you to manage this energy properly. Um, yeah, being grounded, being organized, being efficient. Uh, this is like, this is so funky. I, I literally feel like because like you, your match gets lit and there's such a fire about it, there's such an intensity about it, there's something about the people in your environment or maybe one person in particular that's just like, holy crap, um, and just a little taken aback. Um, if you don't ground, keep in mind that, uh, excuse me, people might have a very hard time being around you. They're gonna be captivated and like, so curious and intrigued and pulled in but they're also gonna have a very hard time with your energy so just be mindful about that I'm also feeling aquarius all of a sudden what's with this aqua energy you're yeah you're gonna be attracting so much attention especially if you act on this energy There's something about acting on this energy that's also owning a uniqueness about you, owning something different. That's the, thank you, that's why that's that's why it's Aquarian. It's the Uranus component. It's that craving for something different. It's craving something that's out of the mundane, out of the typical, out of the mainstream, foreign, something you haven't done before, something about you haven't embraced before, like that sort of thing, right? It's very intriguing and it's very captivating to step into that kind of Uranian Aquarian energy or circumstance, right? And it's really gonna capture a lot of attention of other people. You're gonna kind of, you're gonna kind of be a little bit of like a unicorn peacock in a room of like normal people. <laughs> like if everybody's like a gray peacock, you're the blue peacock. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Um, anyway, let's move on. Use this energy, use it. Oh, sorry, hold on one second, guys. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? Not surprising, camel. Camel is efficiency. <laughs> Literally, that's what camel's about in this deck. It's about efficiency. <clears throat> How to you utilize your resources to maintain your, your vitality, to maintain your energy, to get from point A to point B. Are you planning appropriately? Did you think of everything? Did you bring your water? Did you bring your sunscreen? <laughs> As you're tra traipsing about through the desert. Um, it's the perfect card for what's going on this week. <clears throat> Ooh, just looking at what's underneath. Um, what's lurking underneath is panther. You could be the solid grounded camel, the wise camel that brings water for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, or you can be a pissed off panther and feel out of control, feel ungrounded, feel caught off guard by things that are that are happening, changes that are happening that, that you didn't expect, that you're not ready for, that you don't know how to adapt to. Are you gonna be the camel? Are you gonna be the panther? There's also an emotional component to this too. A panther can also be catharsis, like a big emotional release, whether it's in the form of a fight, a cry, whatever it is. While camel, you can see how it has like the blue moon right there. Camel also speaks of emotional stability. Um, maintaining, 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 maintaining through changes and through chaos. Like I said, the full moon's gonna challenge us with that. Are you able to, to stay a hold of yourself, keep a hold of yourself? through all kinds of chaos and changes. Even as you initiate change, can you still hold on to a core part of who you are and embrace emotions as they come and, and be chill about it, be cool about it, keep your head about you, essentially? Or are you gonna be the panther? Neither one's bad. I also wanna say that, like this is not a judgmental thing. 
you can be the panther, be the panther and see what that path is like. Be the camel, see what that path is like. We're human, we get a choice, it's a free will choice. But definitely two different uh, ways this can go for, for some of us here, okay? Wow. All right, so moving on, that was collective. Um, let's go ahead and do, am I gonna do elements? or signs. My energy is pretty shot and like I'm, I'm kind of worried about more coughing fits. So I'm just going to stick with elements for the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, fire, earth, water, air. Earth. You're going first. Earth. The earthykins. You guys are first today. Okay. What deck do you guys want? You're torn. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go with this one. We're gonna go with this one. Um, God, I already forgot the name of this one. <gasps> How could I forget the name of this one? This wasn't was a, this one was a gift too. Um, oh my God, honest truth deck. There we go. We came to me. I know I did. Okay, Earth signs. What's going on for my Capricorns, Tauruses, and Virgos? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the week. I feel like you, this is your wheelhouse. I feel like this is a week for earth signs to feel pretty good about themselves uh, and to handle themselves well. Um, it's like Uranus is literally in Taurus. We're in Virgo season. We don't really have much going on in Capricorn except for Pluto. Pluto has been, you know, doing a lot for Capricorns in the last uh, however many years. But yeah, this definitely feels like a week to deal with earthly changes. I feel like you guys are gonna handle it just fine. Let's see. Any messages or insights for my earth signs? Things might get really emotional. That's coming up. Things might get really, really emotional. Obviously more so around the full moon Pisces, especially if you have any strong Pisces in your chart. Hmm. I, I think you're gonna handle it fine though. Any messages or insights for my earth signs? <laughs> it gonna get emotional. <laughs> uh, Six of Cups in reverse. Yikes. Uh, Six of Cups is my patterns card. A lot of you have been with me for a while know that. Like I look at it as childhood patterns, family patterns, ancestral patterns, and how we treat ourselves and, and relationships and how we relate to the world emotionally. But it's also karmic energy. It's past life energy. In reverse, it also speaks of bad memories. Emotional baggage too. Um, bad memories. You're breaking away from this. You're breaking away from the Six of Cups in reverse energy. Um, there's regret. Feeling a lot of regret. Regret for how you, you utilize some time. How you beat yourself up. Oh, okay. How much time you spent beating yourself up or putting yourself down. I'm hearing when it could have been so much easier. When life could have been so much easier. This might be just a lesson you're learning under the full moon Pisces the clarity that you guys are going to be getting but I feel like you're, you're putting this away you're breaking away from this you're breaking away from shaming yourself putting pressure on yourself you're you're stepping away from that and I feel like that came from from experiences where maybe you didn't rise to the occasion uh I don't want to say fail it's such a strong word where you just didn't rise to the occasion whether it was something that someone asked of you or expected of you or like you didn't perform <laughs> you know, and by whatever way you were supposed to. It's like the word failure keeps getting circulated around, but I don't even like saying it, but maybe you've said it or you've thought about it with yourself. Uh, with yourself. Um, those memories, those feelings, you're, you're learning to kind of just break away from them. Let's see what else. Anything else for my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. For this upcoming week. I'm hearing practical, practical, practical. There's no room for this in practical endeavors. It's also just just brings in an illusion, right? It's like if you are being practical about something or you're dealing with money or whatever, it's like this stuff doesn't have a place there. 
and not everyone's gonna agree with that you don't have to agree with that but in my opinion just my opinion my observation again whatever your truth is honor your truth <clears throat> There's no place for this in practical matters. Practical is practical. It's felt really rigid there all of a sudden, but any other messages or insights? Oh, ah, earth signs, star in reverse. Yeah, again, just kind of more of the same of what I was saying. That star in reverse energy feels hopeless. Uh, that feels like loss, failure. There is no hope. There is no chance for success or meeting a certain expectation or standard. These are the feelings that you've been kind of carrying around and beating yourself up with. Full Moon and Pisces is going to make this very clear to you how this has been holding you back and how you've been, you've been dealing with certain, and I don't want to say all, but certain practical matters with this kind of emotion with you in the back of your head, in the back of your mind, when it doesn't even belong there. Again, practical is practical. Certain things you just got to do. <laughs> Certain things you got to do and they're not personal. Mm. I feel Virgo with there. Virgos, I feel you there. It's not personal. This is definitely relating to performance or feeling like you failed or like any time where, you know, people were disappointed by your performance or action, whether that's work related, school related, family related, whatever. Um, you didn't meet the challenge, whatever. It's not personal. Even if somebody was a dick <laughs> or a butt to you about not performing right or not doing something the right way, whatever, if they were a dick or a butt about it, like that's on them, that's not on you, right? And it, it ain't personal, but this feels really personal. You're kind of stepping into a bit of an Aquarian energy or signs of detaching from this. Any other messages or insights from my Earth signs? Ooh, for this week. Jeez, Earth signs. Okay, love the overall energy. Just keeps reiterating more of the same. Five of Wands and the Seven of Cups. This is feeling conflicted. This is having confusion. This is emotional overwhelm and stress and just like feeling at war at war with yourself or with other people. And it's all around these emotions and feelings. Like I said, this is what you're breaking away from this week. This is what you're breaking away from. You're learning to emotionally detach from that. You're learning that certain things are just practical and they're not personal and they don't need to have emotional stuff tied into it because it's not about that. <clears throat> and really wanting you to see that differently. Overall, the Knight of Cups. I love that. This to me feels very healing. <laughs> feels very, very healing. Some of you might actually even get a straight up apology because even underneath that, we do have the Queen of Wands in a verse and the Ten of Pentacles for my earth signs. I feel like you're the queen of wands in a verse. Queen of wands in a verse can be somebody who has a hurt ego or somebody who is discouraged, doesn't feel like they can perform, doesn't feel like they can be motivated or up to the task here. Um, but with, and around the 10 of pentacles, that's, and you guys know what 10 of pentacles is, right? It's family, it's legacy, it's health, it's wealth, it's the long-term plan of stability and security, right? So for some of us, I, I kind of look at it as the physical container of your life in the long-term sense. But with the Knight of Cups here, this is soothing that. It's soothing that that wounded part. Sorry, I thought I was lagging. Um, it's soothing that wounded part. It's soothing that discouragement to get you to look at this and realize this can be put away, this can be let go of. This doesn't have a place in the Ten of Pentacles in certain ways, in certain practical matters. And again, you might even get a straight-up apology from somebody here, okay? Wow, not what I expected from my air signs. Okay, um, fire, water, air, fire, water, air, fire, fire, you guys are going first, next, first, next, Aries, Leo, Sag, Aries, Leo, Sag for this week, Aries, Leo, Sag, Aries, Leo, Sag, Aries, Leo, Sag, Aries, Leo, Sag, I'm going to go classic with you, I'm going to go with Rider Waite. <clears throat> For my fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius for the upcoming week.
For Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, for the upcoming week. Any messages or insights, please? Getting a couple things. Um, obviously, this isn't going to be for everybody. Um, I, I heard judgment, judgment, criticism. Someone might be really critical around you. Uh, it feels icky. I just want to push it away. Be like, get out of here. Um, I don't know why that needed to be said. It just needed to be said. We'll see if it comes up in the reading. Um, the match that I was talking about earlier, the match being lit, the match being lit, the match being lit. This might really pertain very, um, very hardcore, very significantly to my, my fire signs. Um, they were just reminding me of it. Any messages or insights for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag for this upcoming week. Oh, dang. Dang, 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 dang. Five of wands. I feel like you're going to have an altercation. I, that, thank you. That's why they brought it up. So for some of you, um, this is going to be one person. For others of you, it might just be a pattern that happens this week where there's a lot of friction between people. But people who are judgmental and critical, and this can even be vice versa, especially for my cross, cross watchers, uh, excuse me, um, where you could be the one who's a little judgmental and critical. So take it as it resonates. But Whoever is being judgmental and critical and kind of just like almost like putting you on the spot is how it feels to me, like nitpicking. I just like, I, I literally just want to go like, <laughs> I just like want to flick them away. It's going to light a match and you're not having it. You're not, you're not, you're not having it. Um, and there's also something really empowering about it too. And that's why I'm kind of like laughing a little bit because it's just like when people act like that, they're just acting like, like hurt children, you know? It's really sad because when people are being judgmental like that, it's because they feel so insecure. And so they're putting you on the spot and in turn, you're like, oh, hell no. You kind of put their insecurity on the spot. Um, and then it really empowers you to keep standing up for yourself and not take that sort of shit. Um, interesting, let's keep going for my fire signs. Any other messages or insights for my fire signs? Ooh, ooh, let the lion out. <laughs> Leo, whoa, hold on. Let's drop the card. So we have five of wands with the strength card in reverse. I, I'm hearing, literally hearing the word unleash is what I'm hearing. So if people start acting like that with you, it's going to rub you the wrong way really fast. Uh, this week we do have Ceres in Leo still, and it is still aspecting Saturn and Uranus. I didn't talk about it in the astrology because it's not as strong as it was last week, but Leos, obviously you're still experiencing that energy. Um, that energy with Ceres and Leo uh, opposing Saturn and square Uranus really creates an issue around authority. It creates an issue of, of, of having to deal with people who have authoritative issues, control issues, who do like to be dominant or who do like to be critical and judgmental. Uh, and it makes us feel really underappreciated, even more so when Ceres is in Leo. Because Ceres and Leo is like, we feel love and cared for when people pay attention to us, when they hear us, when they listen to us, when they respect us. And so if anytime someone's not really quite doing that, this week for you, it's clearly creating even more of an extra like trigger, like rubbing you the wrong way even more so than it would otherwise. Ah, it's gonna light the match. Like this to me just feels like you're not holding back. You're not taming yourself. You're letting the beast out. <laughs> and look at you <laughs> and it empowers you and it gives you peace of mind to to let the inner lion out a little bit i know i'm speaking to leos but this is also for all fire signs and then you get the six of swords which is allowing you to have peace of mind it's allowing you to sleep better at night that you said something that you let the beast out a little bit that you were a little impulsive and like i said impulsivity is a big thing this week too when i talked about in the astrology um portion Let's keep going. I feel like I'm lagging. If I'm lagging, I apologize. I don't want to want to stop and try to re-record at this point because it, you know, just feels silly. Any other messages or insights from my fire signs this week? Mm. Ooh, lots of cards coming out. Oh my. Got like five cards, I think. Six cards. Okay quite the little wild ride my fire signs are going to be on. What do we have here? Wow. Oh. 
Oh my God. So I feel like I'm seeing other layers to the situation here. So first of all, this is where you're headed if you let the lion out <clears throat> or inner ram or inner archer, <laughs> Aries and Sag. Uh, you're gonna get peace of mind here and you're gonna be able to move away from that those judgmental critical environments and not take it so hard. There's a learning lesson in here too of how to deal with people like that a little bit better. That's gonna be the lesson of the week for you, probably also to the full moon Pisces. Now, what else came out here? We have the Five of Cups, the Nine of Swords, and the World card. A couple things I'm getting here. So for some of you, this altercation might have some consequences. Mercury opposing Jupiter. <clears throat> it might have some consequences that lead you to losing something very tangible or even losing a person or people out of your life, but it's to teach you something, like I, especially with the World card being there. It's really to teach you about boundaries and what respect really is and how to handle people who are being judgmental or critical and how to see them in a different way and how to deal with how the treatment of how you feel with the treatment of you in that process. It's it's a lesson there. Absolutely. So that's one thing that I'm feeling. Another thing that I'm feeling is that you've actually been struggling with some sort of loss, some sort of emotional hit, um, grievance, I'm hearing the word grievance. And I feel like this judgmental, like naggy energy around you has not been respecting that. Mm. Hasn't been respecting it, hasn't been seeing it, hasn't been gentle with you. And it's time to say something. It's a lesson in how you handle that as well. You can only take so much, right? It's kind of like for some of you even keeping that Five of Cups, Nine of Swords energy a little bit of a secret, a little bit on the down low. Some of you, I think, have also been in denial about it, and now you can't be in denial about it anymore, and you have to deal with it, and it just makes you more on edge with other people. But there's 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 some big lessons in here for my fire signs. Now, something else that came out, hmm, Five of Swords and the Tower card, this, this situation has to change. The way you're, the, the person or people that are being judgmental and critical, like naggy, 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 <laughs> your relationship with them, your situation with them needs to change. Five of swords, that's ego all day. You already have the five of wands here. That's also ego. Tower in reverse, a change is required. It's required. It's required. Um, especially for those of you where this emotional hit is something that already had happened and you've been in denial about it or struggling with it in silence for some of you that needs to change you need to face it you need to face why you've been hiding from it running from it and fully just embrace whatever that 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 deep sadness really is okay um it's a lot going on here then we have magician in reverse this is the last card to come out and then we talk about the overall this actually landed on the six of swords this to me is a feeling of not being capable of being a restrict being held back or restricted or challenged in some way and it, it's wrapped up in this whether the five of cups happens as a consequence of this altercation or you've already been struggling with this deep sadness or regret or grievance and then you have the altercation later that five of cups is directly relating to that magician in, in reverse energy it's dampened your confidence it's dampened your your joy it's also kept you from fully and like being in your body and fully being within yourself because you some of you have really been hiding from this being in silence with it or just trying to be in denial about it and for those of you where this is a consequence you lose something as a result of this altercation it's a lesson that you need to learn okay but you are going to deal with it you are going to deal with it and you have the six of swords to look forward to peace of mind overall I know, best card to come out for you guys, right? Resolution, balance, harmony, forgiveness, acceptance. That goes perfectly with the Six of Swords. Perfectly. You got a lot to look forward to here. It's definitely just a bit of a battle this week. And keep in mind also for some of you, this is energy that probably is going to go past this week. Might even be a part of your Mars retrograde experience, but you have this to look forward to, okay? Wow, these readings are getting kind of long. So we did earth, we did fire. <clears throat> we have water and air. Mm. Okay. 
am I doing water or air? Water, we're going with water signs. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. You guys want the runic tarot? Let's do it. Any messages or insights for my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Do my shelf. Oh, hello, water signs. <laughs> Starting off strong with the full card. Okay, okay. You ballsy. I see you. You're free. <clears throat> I often look at this as Aries, but this is also kind of like a Uranus energy, and you are totally embracing it, water signs. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I really want to say be careful, but. It's, it's a really great energy, too, because it's a fully trusting energy of I'm just going to walk forward and and just have faith that I'm not going to fall off a cliff. You feel really free. You feel really empowered. You feel really liberated this week. Water signs. What happened? Something happened. I can I can feel it. Something has happened to, to facilitate this. Any other messages or insights for my water signs for Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio? Sorry, I keep shaking the camera. I don't need to. Ooh, three of wands. Water signs. Oh, I'm loving it. Wow. Very optimistic very very optimistic you're also leading with your chest this is also something they're saying you're leading with your heart you're like your chest out chest forward uh and you're feeling really really good about yourself and really really good about life you're really feeling light you're not looking back um i think some of you gotten really good at your self-talk that's what they're saying that the self-talk has improved um almost non-existent interesting uh this is great i love it this is great some of you have been in like a big stagnancy, a big waiting period. I feel like some of you really struggled with that. And I'm not even saying the waiting period is over. You're just getting better at being still. You're getting better at being where you're at with your eyes open forward and not looking back. You're getting better at that. Something pushed you into this though. I can, I can sense it. Any other messages or insights my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Oh, is it that? <laughs> I'll show you guys in a second. Oh my God, I just realized this happened last time. Hold on, I'm sorry. So many things I want to say. First of all, this card came out for you, Scorpios. It does not belong in this deck. And this happened, I think, yesterday or this morning, whatever reading I did recently. And I think it actually came out for you, too. Holy shit. No, you know what? It did. So for part two of Mars Retrograde, for those who haven't watched it yet, go ahead and check it out. I posted it. Um, this same card came out for you using this Runic Tarot deck. And this was the card that came from this other deck. Like, the exact same thing happened for Scorpio. Crazy. Uh... Anyway, water signs. <laughs> we have the Emperor, the Five of Cups, and the Five of Swords. Yikes. And then, oh, and then Three of Cups in reverse. Um, yeah, something totally pushed you into this blissful place, this hopeful, looking forward kind of a place. And I'm getting a couple things here. For some of you, it actually was some sort of really awful experience with another person especially the three of cups in a verse that three of cups in a verse is like um a bond has been broken emotional support is no longer available there's no seeing other people that five of swords five of cups that's there's a triggered experience happening there there's survival mode happening there there's grief there's loss happening there there's pain there's hurt happening there and it's the emperor emperor comes out when we are 
trying to connect to our feelings of authority, of being powerful, of being in control. Some of you were dealing with an emperor at some point in recent past, whether it was months ago, weeks ago. There's a couple of things going on here, so stay with me. So for those of you in that boat, whatever happened there, you're finally able to let it go and put it down. Overall, we have the Queen of Cups. You're finally healing from it, reflecting on it, finding peace with it, and you can let it go and move on to other things. Now, others of you, which I think this is most of you, this is your own energy. That's your own energy, which is a, a feeling of, I am powerful, I am safe, I am in command of my life. There's a bit of an isolated feeling here that I'm getting water signs where I almost feel like trying to embrace your, em your emperor energy, you isolated yourself from other people, you pushed yourself away from other people because of some sort of belief or painful thing there. I feel like you tried to focus on whatever made you feel like an emperor, whether it was work stuff or family stuff or what have you. But in doing so, like, how do I say this? It's almost like what motivated you to go in emperor mode was something really painful, something painful, something that um, what's the word? There's a perfect word for this. I want to wait for the word to come to me. Really slighted, really slighted. Uh, I think whatever it is, you were just in a vulnerable moment and whatever happened, someone slighted you, someone betrayed you, um, someone really hurt your heart. And to to deal with that, you went into emperor mode. Or you've been trying to go into emperor mode. Like it would make you feel better. It'd make you feel better. Um, it'd make you feel stronger and make you feel more confident. Like it had, like you'd have something to show. Oh, this is water signs, this is coming down to some worth, some self-worth stuff. Stepping into emperor mode would make you feel worthy because certain circumstances made you feel so hurt and so unworthy. And so you kind of isolated yourself to do so. Because being around other people or the actual individuals who are, are part of this with you just make you feel like crap or make you feel small or insignificant or not important, not safe. Big stuff, big stuff, water signs. And you're dropping it. You're moving on from that. A lot of confidence this week. Um, a lot of, I can do something different. I can take a risk. And you know what? I can be good at it. That's perfect to help drop some of that self-worth stuff. Okay? Like I said, overall, Queen of Cups. A lot of healing, a lot of reflection here. Also, a lot of um, emotional maturity being exercised here, too. Whew. Wow. I just heard positive change. Lots of positive changes coming your way, water signs. Okay, that one was intense. Air signs. Hey, gem, me gems, my Libras. My aquas. Let's get into what's going on for you this week. Which way do we move? What way are we to move our water? Okay. White Sears Tarot. Sorry, I was debating what deck to use. Ooh. Just cutting the deck, King of Swords and the Empress. Ooh, okay, air signs. So for my Jimmy Gems, Libras, and Aquas, what can they expect this week? Any messages or insights from my air signs for this coming week? Signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. For this upcoming week, oh, what is this thing called? Um, the little wreath crown thingies. I don't know why I'm seeing that. Like the, like they go around the head and they're just like a leaf. It's very Greek or, or Roman, I believe. We'll just say European. Um, I don't know why I'm seeing that, but I'm seeing that. I'm sure it has a symbolic meaning of some sort. Or maybe it's confirmation for some of you. Air signs, air signs. Any messages or insights from my air signs for this upcoming week? Let's 
see. Ooh. Hoo hoo. Hoo hoo. -hoo. <laughs> Lovers and Emperor in reverse. Ugh. So a couple things feel I'm feeling here that I don't like to feel. This is feeling out of control. This is actually a feeling of powerlessness that I'm getting. Um, feeling really out of balance. Um, feeling like you're kind of at the mercy of your emotions. You're kind of at the mercy of also your mind. I feel like the, the mind is doing a lot to you that's really like not confusing you, um, making you feel pretty shitty, like, like negative self-talk. Like how water, si like water signs were getting better at self-talk, yours seems to be getting the better of you. Mercury is retrograding in Libra. We do have a lot of air energy right now and a lot of mercury energy right now. But that's how this is feeling to me. The mind is playing tricks on you. You're feeling out of control. You're feeling kind of insecure. You're feeling kind of scattered. You're, just, you're not feeling your best here, air signs. You're not feeling your best. Well, I know why. Ace of Cups in reverse. And we have the Two of Cups with the Chariot card. Okay, air signs. This seems pretty clear cut and dry here. Um, what's making you feel so crappy and making you have all this negative self-talk and making you feel out of sorts. And with Ace of Cups in reverse, also having you really in your ego. Two of Cups with the Chariot. There seems to be some sort of relationship here uh, that's, that's, there's a miscommunication. Something is not connecting. Something is not pairing up right. Something's not matching up right. With the Two of Cups upright, though, this is where I think your mind is getting the best of you. The Two of Cups upright implies that there is some sort of reciprocal connection. There's some sort of reciprocal emotion here and that there can be success with this relationship. This honestly feels straight up romantic. So for some of you, this is not going to apply at all. And I almost never get straight up romantic reads like this. Um, but this to me feels like somebody who is almost in denial about it. They're in their ego, they're insecure, um, their heart's not open. Whether this is you or the other person, the heart is not open here. Let's keep going. And there's avoidance happening. There's also avoidance, getting big, big, big avoidance here of the situation. Any other messages or insights for my air signs, for Gemini, Libra, Aquarius? Overall, two ones in a verse. Avoidance. Avoidance of making some decision here. This is like super, super straightforward. Yeah, Ace of Swords in a verse. There's like not thinking clearly here. Not thinking clearly, not communicating clearly at all. Whoever this emperor is. I kind of, sorry, I almost want to apologize to my air signs. Um, this is a very straightforward romantic read of somebody who is just, they are not in the right headspace, they're not in the right emotional space, and a relationship could be successful here, but for the time being, as long as they are not thinking straight and they're not in their truth and they're avoiding their emotions and what they want and just avoiding making a choice, it's not going to work out. I almost want to do another read for air signs. <laughs> um... Hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> we talk to each other all the time. I know. I know. I'm sorry. It's almost dinner time for him. <sighs> Should I see what else I'm going to be picking up here? For some of you, um, you could be confronted with the opportunity of a relationship and you just get too freaked out by it and you're just not ready for it. And that's totally fine. You're human. Having a human experience, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> I know, Clyde, I'm coming. All right, guys, I got to go, but I hope you guys have a great night and a great week, and I hope to see you guys very soon. Don't forget to check out everything that is linked below, Vimeo, Patreon, and all the stuff, and take care.